Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. John the Evangelist Church. I'm so glad you could all be here with us this morning for our Holy Communion service. Uh, this morning's service is going to be from the Book of Common Prayer. We'll begin with a couple of moments of songs just to quiet our hearts and our minds and to uh, bring us aware of God's presence. Thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we 
they perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments are all law and prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honor and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she had, may faithfully serve, honor, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost live and reign, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Lord God, our Redeemer, who heard the cry of your people and sent your servant Moses to lead them out of slavery, free us from the tyranny of sin and death, and by the leading of your Spirit, bring us to our promised land. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for proclamation of the word. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, praise the Lord with me, 
and let us magnify his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. Yea, he heard me out of all my fears. O look upon him, and be lightened, and your face shall not be ashamed. His poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. Yea, he saved me out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord tarried round about them that fear him, and delivered them. O oh, taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Thanks be to God. Jesus of Nazareth began to shout out and say, 
Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. Take heart. Get up. He is calling you, they said. So he threw off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of Christ. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Just imagine the scene that's in the Gospel today. Bartimaeus, a blind man, is sitting on the side of the road. And he hears of all the commotion of people coming by. And he must have really thought that this was his chance, this was his only chance to possibly restore his sight. Because I imagine living as a blind person 2,000 years ago was nothing compared to what it is today. Anybody who was blind, who couldn't see, probably couldn't work, couldn't provide a, a sensible living for themselves, they probably lived in poverty. And the situation was probably worse than anything we could imagine. Because you think about it, if you didn't have uh, family members who fr or friends who were willing to care for you, how in the world would you navigate in such a land? How could you find food? How could you earn a living? So he had to resort to sitting along the side of the road, begging that somebody would show mercy and throw a few coins or a bit of food his way. So when he heard Jesus passing by, he was so excited. And he called it, you can almost imagine the fuss, you know, when you got someone important coming to town, how we kind of, uh, you don't want anyone to disrupt them. So he's probably calling out, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, look at me, help me, help me. And of course, like we would, we'd say, be quiet, hush, hush. You know, we're trying to get people to, uh, not to uh, disturb him. But Jesus heard his cry. Jesus heard his cry and welcomed him to come over. And when he did that, there was something that he said to him. And he said, Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And you can kind of wonder, why did Jesus even ask that? Couldn't he tell the man was blind? Didn't he know what he wanted? But he asked Jesus, yes, Barnabas, to name his need. What do you want me to do for you? And Barnabas said, my teacher, let me see. It was this one and true gift that he really, really needed. Restore my sight so I can be whole again. So we can only imagine Barnabas' joy when all of a sudden he can see. You can almost picture him like leaping around with joy filled his heart. And when he did that, his life changed. Because there's three things that happened in this story. First we see is the story of persistence in the face of adversity. Because even though he was blind and he struggled his whole life, he persisted that his situation was going to change. And even though people told him to be quiet, he kept at it. He kept calling him to Jesus because he knew that Jesus could make a difference in his life. The second thing that happened in this story was that faith led to healing. Because Jesus said, your faith has made you well. Not that Jesus had cured him or anything else that had happened, but our basis, faith had made him well. It changed him from the inside out. He was able to see again, which completely would change his future. He had a new life waiting for him when he had restored sight. 
And something else about the story is the story of discipleship. Because we're told that Jesus, we're told that Bartimaeus, when he regained his sight, followed him on the way. He followed Jesus. He, I would say he probably told the story wherever Jesus went. I was once blind, but now I see. It was a wonderful story of faith and how faith has changed his life. Each and every one of us here, and even the people online, we all follow Jesus for our own reasons. There's always that, and each one of us has a different story to tell. For some of us, it may be out of gratitude because we've been healed of some kind of sickness or illness, whether it be spiritual, physical, mental, or emotional. Somehow, God touched our lives. Through Jesus, we know the stories, and we were healed. And it's out of that gratitude that we follow God each and every day, that we try to follow Jesus in his way of living and live our lives differently. Other of us are probably yeah, felt some of the kind of calling into whatever we were doing in our lives. A calling that calls forth to follow Jesus in his way and to uh, try to be a light in this world, to bring hope and compassion. And other of us are probably cradle Indians who were taught to uh, follow Jesus when we were little kids and we came to Sunday school and we learned the prayers and we learned the, the songs and we just knew that this was the way that our parents wanted us to live and this was the way that God wanted us to live. We all have our own reasons, we all have our own stories. But each story is important and unique. In this life, we're all on a journey. We're on a journey, on a path of life, and hopefully we're all following Jesus on the way. We are the ones who bring love and compassion and mercy and grace into this world. And that's the important thing about following Jesus, to live differently, a different life than if we weren't. Just like Bartimaeus, all of our eyes have been open to a way of love. And we're all called forward on that in the journey. So may Jesus be with each and every one of you today in your journey. May he fill your hearts with compassion and love and mercy for each fellow traveler you meet on the road. May God bless you and keep and help build up your faith and keep you strong in the days ahead. Amen.
I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. unto God the sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Our offertory hymn is number 529, Just As I Am, number 529.
your people in all times and ages. May we who offer you our praise today always be ready to follow where you lead. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Let us pray for peace on earth and for the unity of all Christian people. Let us pray for our missionaries at home and abroad in their own especially the let us remember before God those of our brother who have departed this life and are at rest. Remembering especially today Jean Gardner and Ronald George. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in the earth. Almighty and ever-living God, the one thy holy apostle had taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty. Beseeching thee to inspire and continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. I grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for our prime Linda, for our Bishop Sam, for Archdeacon Charlene, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace especially to this congregation here present, that with meek hearts and due reverence, they may hear and receive my holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy Father and goodness, O Lord, to comfort and suffer all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Especially those now we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. I bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that, rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, were without end. Amen. Ye that can truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, 
and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time will accuse the man of commit, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do ask you repent, and our heart be strive for these government's doings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, and our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hear and act, serve and peace be in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy had promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ said to all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And hear also what St. John said, If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is me and right so to do. It is very meet and right in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy. Holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Who may appear by his own oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect sacrifice, oblation of satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to our Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night as he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he 
when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants of all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, we make before thee in this sacrament the holy bread of eternal life, and a cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he had commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy holy church may obtain remission of our sins and all our benefits of the passion. And we pray that by the powers of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not we presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs on thy table. But thou art the same Lord, which the property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so that we eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed in his most precious blood, that we may never more run him in the house. Amen. O Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace.
Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sits at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, and the only O Christ of the Holy Ghost, our most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for coming out to worship with us this morning. So glad to uh, see you all here. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we before we go to our hymn. I know we have uh, something to celebrate this week, and I hope uh, you probably all know uh, Edward Kelly. Is Edward's going halfway to the church with him? Do you want to raise your hand there? Edward graduated this week from Cream Queens College. He had a diploma in uh, theology and ministry. It's a three year program which he completed. And uh, Karen and I were honored on uh, Thursday night to be able to attend the Queen's College Convocation and see uh, Edward get his diploma. So I hope you can all uh, give a round of applause and congratulations. Uh, yes, congratulations, Edward. We're so very proud of you for doing that. I know it's a lot of work to do courses at Queen's. There's a few other events since there in the bulletin. First, before we go, does anybody have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Not here. Benjamin had a birthday. Oh, wish wish Benjamin had a birthday from us. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else have a birthday or anniversary this week? Oh, well, okay. Tomorrow is his birthday, I think. Okay. Wish Carol a happy birthday from us. Bert, Bert, you got a birthday this week? Little bird just holding. <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> Anyone else this week? Well, God bless you all. I wonder if Jean's play Happy Birthday for us.
well, that's on the go, so hopefully you can come and join us for around some of that. Now, our closing hymn is number 802. My hope is built on nothing less, number 802. Thanks be to God.